Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Magazine. On the broadcast today, Kyle Roving joins us. He is the executive director of the Great Basin Water Network, and he's here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada News Magazine. Big R and Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot clothing store and a whole lot more. For the cold days ahead, jackets, hoodies, flannel shirts, insulated bib overalls, thermal underwear, beanies, and merino wool socks. Big R. Hardware, clothing, and a whole lot more. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Kyle Rorink. He is executive director of the Great Basin Water Network. It is a pleasure to have you back, sir. Always glad to be back, sir. Thank you. All right, so the New York Times has a major piece uh, about a week or so ago. Colorado River states are racing to agree on cuts before Inauguration Day. That was a fascinating story, just because one doesn't think in terms of the election cycle is coming up, we better get our stuff done. But according to this article, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Can you fill us in? Well, absolutely. I think this is focusing on uh, w everybody working on the river calls it the 2026 negotiations, but we're racing toward a deadline to get new long-term management plans in place for Lake Mead and, and Lake Powell. And uh, this is coming at a time where we're dealing with increased aridity and scarcity and all the things that have been making sensational headlines and you know, very you know, uh, troubling headlines across the world. Uh, for the past five or six years. So we have the seven basin states um, that have shares of the Colorado River and Mexico and tribes all negotiating and jockeying for their vision of what they want to see management look like at the nation's two largest reservoirs. Uh, so we have this, this 2026 deadline to get these new management regimes in place. And as you can imagine, the seven basin states and, uh, and, and the tribes to some extent and uh, non-governmental organizations like myself and many other parties, you know, uh, all have disagreements. On, I, I, and that would be putting it mildly. And that would be putting it very mildly. <laughs> And there, there are fascinating uh, political divisions and just policy divisions. For, for example? I mean, I think the, the biggest sticking point right now is the lower basins, uh, overall consumptive use. Uh, there is 
what we call uh, this idea called the structural deficit that the lower basin is using about a million more acre feet every year than what it's entitled to that's been uh, changed in recent years because of some of the, well just for lack of a better term, the more emergency management provisions that have been enacted to, to help stave off the bleeding at our large reservoirs. But I think lower basin's consumptive use is the big one. And then the upper basin has all this paper water that they want to put to use. So the upper basin is telling the lower basin they want the lower basin to use less so then they can use more. And it's like, well, how's that going to actually help? Because there's things? more of what's not there. More of what's not there. Okay, it seemed from this article that the Metropolitan Water District, which is the Los Angeles area, and Imperial Valley seem to be more willing to come to the table. Is that the sense you're getting? I think California has, has shown that it is willing to come to the table in a way um, that, say, in 2019, I think you saw entities like the Imperial Irrigation District not really willing to work, uh, as, as always is the case in, in politics. Money makes things a lot easier. And because of the infrastructure bill, uh, because of the IRA, uh, the federal government has, has been able to basically shower anybody who wants money with, with money to just stop using water and to leave it in the reservoir. So that has really made for a, a slick glide path, um, as well as the big winter last year. Sure. I think we're all looking at the mountains and doing our snow dances right now because um, snowpacks throughout the Colorado River Basin, the upper and lower basin, are not looking that great. We've had some storms come in and that's gonna, that's, that will exacerbate everything. Okay, but we also have to be realistic and say yeah. that we, you know, we're taping this on January 10th yeah. and we've got you know, a couple of systems backed up for the Sierra Nevada at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a long ways to go before long winter is over and we've had miracle marches and Aprils. So, you know, but, and, and that's one of the things that kind of frustrates, as you know, I was a weatherman for 23 years on TV in North Nevada. And we go through these cycles where we get an incredibly wet year, we might get two incredibly wet years, and then we go through cycles of two, three, maybe even four years of, of where we don't get a, a solid winter. But that's normal for northern Nevada over the last 40 years. Now that's not climate, that's just what has actually occurred. Climate would be over a much longer period of time than that. About a year and a half ago, a top-ranking official uh, from the Bureau of Reclamation, there was a big call to discuss um, a regulatory proceeding that, uh, that the Bureau was enacting. And this official got on there and said something that I, shocked me, shocked a lot of us. He said, stationarity is dead. What does that mean? And stationarity is basically this idea that you just said, like, we understand our cycles. We understand you'll have some big years, you'll have the dry years. But what the implication was for his saying that was that there is so much more uncertainty now. And I think that uncertainty, why the Bureau felt comfortable in saying that was look at what average flows have done since 2000. We are not getting back the average flows that we had from 2000, like the whole 20th century, basically. We've lost 20% of our 20th century you average. You mean 21st century? Uh, well, we've lost 20% of what the averages were in the, in the 20th century, in the 21st century. Okay, Sorry. but I'm going to play devil's yeah. advocate here and say that 23, even 24 years, is a microcosm of what climate is over the millennia. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard for me coming from the background of working with meteorologists at the National Weather Service for all those years to go, okay, in that short of a period, which, which, you know, it, it, it's not that long of a period of time. And I'm not, uh, you know, a climate denier. Yeah. I think the climate is changing. I don't know uh, for certainty what all the, uh, you know, the reasons are, but we can obviously see that that is the case. But we also have much more news reporting. We also have much more information uh, through social media, et cetera, where if there was a drought or a flood somewhere or a hurricane or a tornado, 
50 years ago, we didn't know about it, right? right? I mean, you know, if we did know about it, it might be six months later when the Pony Express showed up. Um, <laughs> but now something happens, we have all this information, which is great in your business because that gives you a lot more ammunition to be able to work with. But does it really say that things are different from the past to now just because we have all this information? You know, well, I would love to get into a conversation with you about deep geologic time uh, and, 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 and the changes of, um, you know, that, that we can see, because you're right, like we are dealing with an eye blink uh, as it relates to the, you know, long term water cycle. But I think when you have top water officials in every state recognizing that what everyone is seeing on the ground is is vastly different than than the way things were uh, a, a century ago, 50 years ago. There, there was a very dry period between 1953 and 1977. That's that's very well documented. What we are seeing now is 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 a magnitude worse than that in in some regards. So I think what folks are seeing and realizing is that the systems that we have in place need to change. Okay, well now, all right, and, and I, I take your point, but isn't what we're doing, especially here in Nevada, um, just showing extraordinary um, leadership in how you deal with a shortage of water? Because the biggest problem forever, especially in the West, has been all these water rights that don't have any water behind them. Yeah. Lakes that have all these water rights that are so overmanaged. Walker Lake was a great example of that. Didn't matter how much rain came down and snow, it was never going to change until the federal government got involved and the state got involved to be able to change that. And now Walker Lake, you know, hopefully is coming back in a way that we would all be thrilled about. But, but water management becomes, to me, a bigger issue at this point than anything else. Uh, um Absolutely. And I think a great example of our leadership was at the recent Colorado River Water Users Association conference in Vegas right before the holidays. All the water buffaloes from all seven states were there and from the Fed and um, General Manager Ensminger from, from the SNWA, I think, was saying all the right things about where we are headed and what we needed to do. And he was calling on everybody else to get up to speed. With, he was demanding with, with as far where as we I are. was concerned. Yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, I'm a fan. And, and justifiably so. And because so many water districts, whether they're muni or some other type of use, like, hey, you know, we can all, we got to start doing the little things better. And when you go to Denver, you go to Salt Lake, and uh, just like John does, when I go to these places, I pull my hair out because you just see water waste everywhere. And it is, it's, in, it's infuriating when you're negotiating with, with people, I imagine, and you walk into a, a building in Salt Lake or Denver or somewhere else in the basin, and you're walking by and the sprinklers are going off at 10 a.m. on a bright and sunny day, in July to water grass that has no business in in, Being in, in that location in, 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 in these communities and isn't growing food isn't isn't doing anything isn't serving any purpose except to you know have someone cut it right but but the bottom line for that is that people don't deal with reality until reality comes and strikes them in the face and uh, I was talking with Pat Mulroy about the drought in the late 70s in Marin County where we were on 35 gallons of water a day. You know, uh, you only flush number two, you don't flush <laughs> number yeah. one. Um, you, you, you take Navy showers, um, all of a sudden- Bricks in the toilets. Yeah, you're dealing with a reality you weren't dealing with before. When the water comes out of the tap, what do you care? Yeah. But, but we need to care. Let's take a break, we'll come back much more with Kyle Rohrink after this time out. Story County is leading Nevada, home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. 
Story County is leading Nevada's future. Carson Valley Inn. It's your place for the good times. Carson Valley Inn. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Carl Rohrink. He is the executive director of the Great Basin Water Network. Um, in the past, it seemed to me that um, the, the seven states and Mexico were trying to work things out themselves without the federal government being involved. Now, it is totally Interior involved in all of this, that... that they have to be a major player in this because it's gotten so real. Yeah, Interior has always been in the middle. I think I think the Bureau has just always deferred to the seven states um, in a way that uh, for NGOs like myself can be uh, a little vexing at times as it relates to the amount of, uh, of scrutiny that, uh, that regulators would be putting on the plans of the regulators from the seven states. And, and so I think this actually gets to the heart of what the New York Times piece was, was really trying to imply is like you have a bunch of people sitting around these tables and I don't think anyone is under the impression that like who's ultimately going to write the final deal that gets put in place and put the stamp of approval on the deal that gets put in place. I mean it's, it's the folks from the seven states. You know, NGOs like mine, academics, and others will all have opportunities to participate publicly through NEPA, but I am under no illusions. I will advocate for right. what I believe to be right, but we know what's going to happen in, in, the, in the back uh, smoky rooms, and that is what it is. But I think the significance of the Times piece is what are the dynamics now? How do those political dynamics among the people sitting at the table change if you are if you have a new commissioner for, your, for the Bureau of Reclamation, a new Secretary of the Interior, new top-level technocrats and bureaucrats coming in who may want a different thing than the current administration is, okay, is so promising. What, okay, so what would the different thing be, in your opinion? Um, because presumably you'd be going from a, a, a Democratic administration to a Republican administration, and that, as you say, changes all the top people, but it doesn't change all the people that really do all the work and the regulators. Um, so, so, I mean, uh, can you envision a situation where suddenly it will be just let the water flow? I, I mean, yeah, no, that'll never be the case, but I think like in the. Because it's what, 40 million people affected? 40 million people. I think when it comes to like the palace intrigue of, of the politics here, what we're really getting at in, in the minutia is like, well, is the new Secretary of the Interior from an upper basin state or a lower basin state? Are they even from a Colorado River basin state? The same thing could be said about a commissioner from reclamation. And so, like, you can, you can get into the 
tea leaves of all this pretty easily and go down those rabbit holes. And I think when, when you look at the development of the, uh, of the Colorado River um, over the past 100 years, for example, that has, that has played a role in certain directions of, of river management um, over time in terms of like Herbert Hoover's uh, allegiances to California as it relates to the de development of what we now call Hoover Dam. Um, well, and growth. I mean, in general, that would be the catch-all word, would it not be? I think so. Okay. All right. Let's, let's change here um, to what's going on in the state of Nevada. Pete Goakachia has been pretty much the man when it came to water, water issues yeah. for a long time. Yeah. He is now uh, turned out. Robin Titus is, as she said on this program, doing her best to get up to speed on this. Your concerns? Yeah, when you lose institutional knowledge, I think what we're going to see is the, the effects of, of, of term limits. Um, the senator was able to bring people together in a way that um, takes a lot of experience and, and wisdom and under, on the ground understanding uh, about how water works. But I think a lot of people hearken back to the, uh, to the 2017 session where uh, the good senator uh, was working with then first term senator Ivana Kinsella on some very contentious issues. And there was uh, you know, great collaboration in that regard to get an outcome that was certainly best. So, you know, I look back on instances uh, like that and I think this session there were um, a number of things I could hearken back to that, yeah, it was, he was the dean and you, you kind of had to get his uh, seal of approval to do anything. Well, the good news that. is he is still with us. He so, still is. And he has yeah. a cell phone, so he, we can still reach does. him. Let's take another break. We'll be right back with Kyle Rowing after this timeout. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy, enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail. We help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Kyle Rohrink. He is the executive director of the Great Basin Water Network. What is going on in Ely? It seems like it is a boom time there. Um, massive water project uh, is moving forward. Is it for real? Where does that water go? You've only got two and a half minutes. Uh, <laughs> Please try to be you succinct. Know, there's, uh, yeah, what we call a, a, a pumped uh, hydro storage project that would basically, as what their pitchmen say, serve as a big battery um, out there. And I think that is one... For renewable energy. For, for, for renewable energy. And you're basically pumping water uh, uphill during the day and then letting it run downhill at, at night. It's a two and a half billion dollar project, right? Yeah, yeah, at least. And, um, but you know, it would be pumped uh, uphill with, uh, with resources that are now naturally 
natural gas and coal and the whole mix of the grid. So the idea that it's completely clean and renewable um, is a bit lost on me because I understand that, Mount Wheeler power. Okay, uh, now hang on. Isn't that the, the case across the country? That you know, so many of these renewable projects, the further you dig into them, trying to figure out the benefits of them for the atmosphere gets to be a little quirky. Well, these are the types of things that are bringing environmentalists and you know more traditional conservative natural resource minded folks together once again, uh, much like water does. And you know we're we're having serious questions uh, about all the the solar arrays and wind projects that are being pitched for out in Ely. What does that mean for sage grouse habitat? A lot of these projects go into the last places where the sage grouse remain. What does that mean for future mitigation for maybe a new mine that comes along and these are the types of calculations that rural communities are going to be facing more and more and more is you know what do you really want for the long term to be your industries in in these communities that have traditionally been extractive for you know uh, you know all things considered but the thing that's amazing is that in a good way, the entire state of Nevada is on fire with just incredible economic development projects. It's amazing. Yeah, if, if you're a solar developer or a, a wind developer or a transmission Lithium. developer, uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're rolling uh, in it right now. And I mean, there's, there's going to be some number of environmental reviews coming up uh, for, for GreenLink uh, North that I think will will really, depending on how those outcomes play out, will kind of paint a pretty clear picture of, of where we are going in this state. Oh, sure, you say that when we hit 20 minutes in the interview and we got to go. More to come with Carl Roaring, please. Thank you, Sam. And we'll be right back. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, Beautiful. 7 at 7 is a newscast built for your smartphone. It's a 7 minute newscast available every weekday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. at LVRJ.com. We don't waste your time and we give you the day's top stories. We at the RJ have noticed some similarities between us and a certain BTS character, RJ. Plus the latest in Las Vegas business, weather, health, and entertainment news. 7 at 7 streaming now on your smartphone. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thank you for continuing to watch Nevada Newsmakers. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next broadcast.